Welcome back to yet another episode of The Road Chose Me. And today, we're gonna to cover a topic that I get asked about all the time. What do I do about safety when I'm driving around the world? You know, I drove through all of Central and South America. I drove all the way around Africa. So I went through a bunch of countries that are notorious, like Nigeria, the Congo, Honduras, Bolivia. This gets broken up into three different categories. What did I do about my personal safety? What did I do about my vehicle and the things inside of it to keep it safe? And how do I stay safe from animals while I'm on the road? So all of that's coming up in this episode. Stick around, let's get right into it. So when it comes to personal safety, how do I keep myself safe? By far the number one question I get asked is, do I take a gun with me when I travel internationally? And the answer is absolutely not. Guns uh, crossing international borders are highly illegal. You will go to jail instantly if you are found crossing international borders with a gun. And that's just blanket basically for the entire world. The idea that you would take a gun with you for protection is so utterly impossible that we can't even talk about it anymore. It's just out of this world impossible. In fact, when you cross into Mexico, there are signs that say, if you even have ammunition, that will guarantee you jail time, let alone an actual firearm, which is even more jail time. And I don't know about you, I have no interest in going to jail in Mexico or any other foreign country for that matter. So for me personally, no, there is just no chance of taking a firearm. So although you can't take a gun with you, there are some other things you could have if you feel the need. When I was hiking in Alaska, I had some bear spray. And so for Alaska to Argentina, it was actually under my driver's seat. And I kind of had visions of, you know, if someone tried to carjack me, maybe I could whip it out and use it on that person. But the reality was that just never happened. And the can of bear spray rolled somewhere under my driver's seat. And somewhere along the way, I completely forgot I even had it. It wasn't until I cleaned the Jeep out when I was selling it in Argentina that I found it again and I remembered it was in there. So you could definitely bring bear spray if you think, you know, if you want that added safety. And is it technically illegal in some countries? I think it might be, but this is one of those things I think that tourists get a little bit of extra leeway or they get away with. You know, if the police are searching your car and they find it, you can just try and explain, you know, it's for safety, it's in case something bad happens. And I feel like it's something that police are gonna give you a bit of leeway in. Certainly in Mexico, that's exactly what happened to me. They would always just say, oh, okay, no problem, we understand. But because that can rolled away and I even forgot I had it, I didn't feel the need to take anything like that for Africa, and so I didn't. I had no bear spray, I didn't have a knife in reach, nothing like that, and never once did I feel threatened or wish that I had something like that. In all of Africa in three years, I never heard a single gunshot. So given that we can't take firearms, how do we keep ourselves safe while we're driving around the world? Well, to be honest with you, a lot of it just comes down to common sense. It's asking locals, it's asking border officials and police, you know, how safe is it here? Has there been any trouble lately? Things like that. You're gonna bump into other travelers on along the way. They're gonna tell you about circumstances in certain countries or regions, and you're gonna get information that goes both ways. Sometimes you learn that a country maybe is having trouble and it's a bit more dangerous than you thought. But then, for example, when I was heading towards Sudan, everybody told me Sudan is the friendliest country on earth and I would have no trouble at all and I could wild camp everywhere I wanted. And that is what I found to be true. And it was really good to have that advice from other people who'd been there so recently. And so a couple of really simple things you can do is, number one, don't drive in the dark. This is like golden advice for international overlanding because the dangers are so much higher in the dark. Firstly, there's danger on the road. There are potholes, there are children playing, there's vehicles with no lights, there's speed bumps. There's just a thousand obstacles on the road that are harder to see and sneak up on you faster in the dark. And the other reason is the chances of bandits or something bad like that happening, robberies, they do go up in the dark. So advice from every overlander that I've ever met driving around the world, find yourself a nice place to camp at maybe three or 4 p.m. Because if you're searching for a place to camp around dusk, it starts to get really stressful. 
find a nice place to camp early on so you're not even tempted to drive in the dark. The handful of times I've done it around the world, it's just been monumentally stressful and I regret doing it every time that I have. The other one is, if you're not feeling safe, don't go out after dark. If you're in a campground, stay there. You don't need to go into the bar in downtown Lagos, Nigeria and get drunk and then stumble home in the dark. That's obviously not a good idea, so a bit of common sense goes a long way. Along the theme of common sense is also what goes a long way to keeping yourself safe is being friendly. A smile and a handshake go a really long way. If you've been friendly to all the people you've met in all the small towns and all the borders you've crossed, chances are they're gonna know people who know people who are gonna recognize you or be like, oh, that's that guy we heard about who's coming. And if you've been nice and friendly, they have no reason to be mean to you. Don't imagine that it's like you versus the world or that there's thousands of people out there who are trying to get you at every possible instance. It's just not like that, that's not reality. And to put that into context, my friend Joanne, she drove from the top of Alaska to the bottom of Argentina all by herself. So she just finished that trip right before coronavirus. She had an amazing time. She slept in her Jeep most of the time by herself in the wilderness and she loved it. She said, in fact, the biggest danger that she ever felt was to her waistline because the food in Mexico was so delicious and people kept trying to invite her in and give her delicious food. So let's be honest, Joanne is a female. She's quite slim. If she can do it by herself and not feel unsafe, I don't think there's any reason that you should feel the need to take a gun in order to feel safe. To be blunt, if you feel the need to take a gun with you to feel safe, then I don't think driving around the world is for you. When it comes to vehicle safety, the first thing, and I mentioned it previously, is that I've installed a kill switch in my Jeep. So even if someone gets the keys, they can't drive it away, which gives me peace of mind that, you know, they're not gonna take the entire vehicle. On top of that, my Jeep also has an alarm. And I know that alarms aren't magic, but they do draw a lot of attention. And that's a really good thing because in many parts of the world, stealing is really frowned upon and people will shame others who steal things. So having an alarm is definitely a plus. And like anywhere in the world, I guess we always run the risk of a smash and grab. And so the first way to prevent that, no matter where you are in the world, is give them nothing to grab. Do not leave your iPhone on the dash. Don't leave your GPS out or your camera. That's just asking for trouble. And that's like security 101, hide all of your valuables, make the inside of your car look really boring. Let dust accumulate on the dash, leave your dirty underwear lying out. Don't give people a reason to smash a window and that's gonna go a long way towards preventing it happening. But it is possible that it will happen. And so for me, the way that I prepare for that is that I lock all of my valuables away inside big lock boxes. So when I drove Alaska to Argentina, I made this shelf in the back of my little Jeep because the Jeep just had a soft top, I knew there was a chance stuff would get stolen. And in fact, I never locked the doors for the entire trip because of that. So what this lockbox did, it meant that whenever I locked the rear tailgate with the key, everything inside that box was totally secure. Yeah, if somebody had have hit it with a sledgehammer for 10 minutes, they probably would have got inside of it. But let's be honest, if you're in a public space and someone's hitting your car with a sledgehammer, you've probably got bigger problems than worrying about them taking your laptop. So in this new Jeep, I added steel lock boxes all over the place. My center console is a unit from Tuffy Security, and that's actually where I keep my camera, my GPS, my wallet. That way they're all handy when I'm sitting in the driver's seat, but every single time I get out of the vehicle, I put those things in the center console and I lock it with the key. And this thing's really sturdy, the lock is really beefy. Same story for the glove box, that's a steel unit and I have some important things in there. And then something I've never even talked about or shown on camera is that I have under seat lock boxes as well. So these are both steel lock boxes. They're bolted through the floor and through the seat bolts, which means they're gonna be extremely hard to get out or get into. But even better than that is that they're hidden and nobody even knows they're there. So even if someone smashes a window, the chances they're even gonna know they exist are really slim. And that's actually where I have my passport, my credit cards, my money, and it's really handy to have those things accessible from the driver's seat. And that gives me real peace of mind. Even if I park on the street and someone smashes a window, 
they're not going to be able to grab anything more than like my clothes or some food and actually the broken window is going to be way more of a problem than anything that they can actually get at. So to keep your stuff safe, I really recommend having lock boxes like this. It really gives me peace of mind that, you know, my stuff won't disappear and that helps me feel confident when I park on the street. When it comes to parking on the street all over the world, it's a thing your car might get broken into. But you know, there's some advice that applies all over the world. Obviously, you want to talk to locals. If someone tells you, hey, this is not a good place to park, take their advice. Read iOverlander. There are plenty of Overlander hangouts now where locals know that people leave their car there for a week while they go hiking in Peru or whatever, and those cars get broken into. So if iOverlander says cars have been broken into in this place, don't leave your car in that place. It's as simple as that. Also, when it comes to overnight parking, I try extremely hard to never leave my vehicle on the street. I will pay for parking. I'll drive it into the secure compound of a hotel. I'll do whatever I can to get my vehicle off the public street and if nothing else, behind one layer of security, you know, behind a guard or behind a steel fence. On that too, once I was at a border in Honduras where I didn't think my Jeep was gonna be very safe and there was a guy there guarding the bank and with a big pump action shotgun. And I just said to him, could you please keep an eye on my Jeep? And funny enough, he walked over and put his foot on the front bumper and held his shotgun at the ready. I took that to mean yes. And after I ran all of my errands and got all of my temp import permit and all of that, I came back, I gave the guy a few dollars and he was extremely happy with that. So vehicle security is something that you need to think about and a smash and grab, I mean, yeah, it's something that might happen, but keep in mind, it might happen in the city you live in too. So don't let it deter you from going on the road. Just plan and prepare and make sure all your important stuff is locked away and it's gonna be more of an inconvenience than anything else. Animal safety is something we have to be mindful of as we're out traveling the world, but it's also important to remember that the likelihood of you having a run-in with an animal is extremely slim. You're way more likely to get hit by lightning than you are to get chomped by a bear, even if you're up in Alaska. So I lived in the Yukon for four years. I've certainly had my fair share of grizzly encounters. I've seen a cougar and certainly I heard some lions roaring while I was sitting around a campfire in Africa. Uh, one elephant bluff charged the Jeep. So I've got a bit of experience with animals and there's a few pieces of advice that I think are really key. The first one is keep your campsite really clean. All of your food and all of your dirty dishes, they should always be inside your vehicle. And in fact, you should always wash your dishes before you put them back inside anyway. As I said earlier, I do carry bear spray with me, a small can like this. Certainly when I'm out hiking on foot, I like to have it. Although once when I was face to face with a snarling and frothing grizzly, uh, it felt very insignificant and I don't think it was gonna really save my life. Luckily in that instance, the grizzly backed down and walked away. A can of bear spray, it'll give you peace of mind if nothing else. As well as that, when you go international, it's really hard to know, you know, what the local deal is. Are elephants just gonna attack for no reason? Do I have to worry about lions? But the thing is, you learn all of that when you get there. You're gonna meet other travelers. There'll be other people camping with you, you know, in Kruger National Park in South Africa. And the locals too, and the people at the national park, they'll tell you what you need to know. So for example, there were parks where they physically will not let you enter if you have any citrus at all. Apparently elephants love oranges and tangerines and lemons, and they've been known to smash open vehicles and smash open fridges to get inside to get the oranges. So there are usually signs and they'll even ask you at the entrance and they'll say, do not bring oranges in because you're just asking for trouble. And if you follow those guidelines, there's no reason to think that elephants or any other animal is gonna give you trouble. And on that, I remember sitting around a campfire in Zimbabwe and actually hearing lions roar. And they were pretty close and I was pretty terrified, but I was with a bunch of South Africans and they said to me, it's fine, man. This happens all the time. Lions never attack groups of more than three people. It just doesn't happen, it's unheard of. So although we, without much lion experience, we're terrified of them, 
it actually turns out they're not as terrifying, you know, as we've made them out to be. Certainly too, I saw my fair share of creepy crawlies, snakes, scorpions, and spiders, and you know, Australia, Africa, a bit of common sense goes a long way. Don't leave your shoes on the ground. You know, it's really nice to have a pop-up roof or a rooftop tent. That's part of the reason they were invented, so you can get up off the ground and away from those creepy crawlies. And, you know, keep your eyes open. Don't go picking up firewood or rocks with your bare hands, because nearly every time I did it, there was a scorpion underneath. Things like that, it's, you could call it common sense, it's using your brain, it's being careful and thinking about what you're doing. And if you do all of those things, chances of you actually having a problem are unbelievably remote. So like the other categories, animal safety comes down to a little bit of preparation and a little bit of common sense and using your brain. So there you have it. I know that's a lot of information to take in and a lot of ground to cover. So let me know down in the comments, did you find this helpful? Is that kind of information going to inspire you to get out there on the road? I really hope it is. That's the point of my channel after all. So if you're enjoying this stuff, please do hit the thumbs up button, hit a subscribe on my channel, it all helps. And again, if you've got ideas for future videos, things that you want to know about, how did I do certain things on the road or how did I modify my Jeep, don't hesitate to ask down in the comments. I'm happy to film topics, anything that you're interested in. So until next time, guys, I hope you can get out there, stay safe, have fun adventures, and I'll see you next time here on The Road Chose Me.